Minecraft. A game where you dig, build, fight and automate with hoppers which will move mob drops, run furnaces and process your hard earned ores into ing- hmm? Wait, this isn't about Minecraft? Well why didn't you say so? Ahem, anyways. SGA mod is, well, a mod, if you couldn't tell. I mean, you should, it's in the name. Also, what does SGA even stand for? Uh, uh Sacre Bleu, Ginormous Anchovies! Mmm, no. I know SGA used to mean something, but that's lost to time and IDG won't tell me. How dare thee! Anyways, SGA is a mod filled with strange and wondrous items that do strange and wondrous things, which we'll talk about another day, but here's a little taster. Oh, see what I mean? Good, then let's begin with the real reason you came here. Hoppers! Now, I'd understand your confusion with hoppers in Terraria, since you can't really automate your furnaces, anvils, or crafting tables. So, if you can't, then... What can you do with them? Well, the first thing you'd obviously expect is hoppers can move items from one chest to another, collect items dropped on them, plus a few new machines which utilise the automation of hoppers to do... THINGS! Since you've got the hoppers and move things around, these machines do a few tasks for you, just to help you out in your daily game. So let's talk about what they are and what they can do. But before I start, there is a quick thing to bring up regarding recipes for the items, as the most commonly used items here is Novite and Novus ingots, both of which are made from ores. However, only one type generates per world. So how do you get the other one? Well, with the transmutation powder, of course. Either use this stuff on Play Store, or just mine it, drop it on the floor, and then transmutate it that way. How convenient. How do you make the powder? With vial powder, mud in a bottle, which is crafted exactly how you're thinking, copper shards, which are dropped from copper wraith, and there you go. We'll start off with the normal hoppers. These can collect items dropped on them, or can be used to transfer items between hoppers and hoppers. And of course the machines. Using a hammer on a hopper will change the direction they're pointing, so they'll either deposit to the left, to the right, or straight down, which they do by default. They can be actuated, so they stay out of your damn way, and you can hook wires up to them as some sort of power, so you can turn them on or off. How convenient! These hoppers are crafted with Novite bars, Novus bars, and a metal sink in a heavy workbench. Who'd have thought you'd use a kitchen sink? Usually it's everything but the kitchen sink. Chest hoppers. These are exactly the same, but with the added benefit of taking inventory from chests and other machines that are above them. The normal hoppers don't do this. These are crafted from a hopper, a golden key, and any chest in a reverse engineering station. Liquidation Hoppers! These hoppers have a single purpose which is to sell any items put in them at the same value as you'll get from an NPC shop, by converting items straight into coins that then get put straight into a chest. These hoppers can sell 10 items at a time, however they can't sell anything that is under 10 copper. These hoppers can still be used to transport items around, however I don't suggest making that unless you want to lose your stuff. These are crafted with a hopper and some gold coins in a reverse engineering station. The Sifting Funnel. This one's pretty self-explanatory, right? Fine, fine. So, the Sifting Funnel can... Wait for it. Sift stuff! Who'd have guessed that one? Lob a ton of slush, silt or fossil into a chest and watch the resources flow. A fantastic little time saver. These are made with an extractinator Some hoppers and metal shells in a reverse engineering station. The dropper. Just like its Minecraftian counterpart, this will drop anything that's pumped into it. Like the hoppers, if you hammer the dropper, it'll rotate where it drops stuff. So it'll either be left, right, up or down. 
I'm sure this has some use, like a long distance wall of flesh summoner to punish the guide for being useless, or a wealth dropper so you can make it rain in that terrarium strip club you've always wanted. These are crafted from Novite bars, Novus bars, and an iron crate in a heavy workbench. Who was expecting the reverse engineering station? Because I was. Oriet Vault. Ever wanted more of that munty, but the collector either never shows up in hell or you're just too lazy to make a mob farm? Well, with this vault, you can drain money from any nearby NPCs, be it town or enemies. And yes, you can have multiple vaults to increase the money gains. So, make yourself a prison, I mean a hotel for your NPCs, and flood the middle with these things and just watch the money flow in. Just have a couple of these with some hoppers connected up to them, hooked up to a chest, and then just stay idle for a while. You'll get rich in no time. If only it worked like that in real life. Now, you can't buy these vaults, they're dropped from the Terraria co-crates. But you need a key from Cratrocity, and it's still roughly 1 in 6 chance to get a vault from these crates. So you'd better terminate a lot of sentient crates. I think you can buy these keys too, but you need a lot of platinum for each key. Numismatic Crucible! Ever wanted to take the lazy route with boss murdering? Or maybe you just want a rare item drop? Well, have I got the deal for you! Introducing the Numismatic Crucible. With this, you'll be able to place souls of your enemies into it using soul jars, which you need to purchase from Sir Dragoon over here. Weaken an enemy to below 10% of its maximum health, throw a jar in its face and collect its soul for use. Place a soul in a crucible, hook up some sort of money system, gosh, I wonder where you can get one of those, and it'll start generating items for you using the funds that you put into it. Nice and easy, right? Now you can farm that rod of discord that you've always wanted. This is crafted with advanced platings, copper or tin bars, energizer batteries, laser markers, and finally a cooking pot. Want to know the details for all of these recipes? Well, you're going to have to go with recipe browser because I'm not going to go through all of them because it takes way longer than I thought it was. I've mentioned about the reverse engineering station a few times. This table has some other uses, but we'll be going over that another day. And there you have it, that's everything to do with hoppers in the SGA mod. What would be interesting if even more machines were added that could do even more automation for you. I mean, maybe we could have a giant miner that would dig for you and get ores and resources, and then they'll be smelted and put into ingots and various other things. Plus, maybe some magic storage support. Ah well, who knows what will happen in the future. Anyways, I'm done here. Now, hop into it and automate the stuff you're too lazy to be bothered to do yourselves. Behold, Perry the Platypus, my extractinator! Ah, Perry the Platypus, what an unexpected surprise, and by unexpected, I mean completely expected! Extractinator! Ah, Perry the Platypus, let me explain my devilish scheme. You see, I have got fed up of people in my way, so I use this extractinator to remove their souls so they die on this spot. And when they die, I just walk all over them. I go straight in front of the queues at the local supermarket. It's amazing, Perry the Platypus.